I, I'm going to talk about it's your time and to use your time wisely. It's your time and to use your time wisely. I, I have a, a quote that I want to speak from that it triggered some thinking and it kept me up for quite a while. And if you're one of those individuals who, who believe in synchronicity, that is said, there's a saying that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And one of the exciting things about what I do now, you know, you learn, you earn, you pass it on, that I'm, I'm training other speakers. I've been speaking for a very long time, 52 years. <laughs> it i still do i love motivating people i love encouraging people i love making people laugh i i, I really do I, they i i remember when i was i think i was in the fifth grade and i i was performing for the kids in the class that i was in and and the teacher said you know what they you could be a comedian <laughs> She came in, she didn't even punish me because she was outside the hall cracking up herself and got other teachers to come and watch me. I had a little routine. <laughs> but laughter is important because the life things are tracking us. They're things that are stalking us. They're things that's trying to rob us of our happiness. And we're in a good place right now. Just think about this. The air, it breathes better. I mean, there's no drama. I'm not waking up in the morning and say, did anything happen today? <laughs> Listen, and we want to maximize this moment. It's your time. Maximize this moment. Take advantage of it. We just got through some stuff and we're still here. And you want to take advantage of it. See, here's the thing. We're here to take advantage of the time that we have been given. Herein, my Father, glorify that ye bear much fruit. This is a time that we want to be very productive and, 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 and very fruitful because this is a different landscape. This is a different environment. This is your time. This is my time. Let me include me in that as well. Yes, and so now nobody's going to bring anything to you. Just put it in your lap and say, do something with this. No, commit thy work. See, you got to work for it. <laughs> See, if, 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 if you're not willing to work, nothing works. <laughs> you can be given the best opportunity in the world and, and just have it laid out before you. And if you're not willing to work, nothing works. I remember I, I went to see a friend of mine and and he was living on Miami Beach. His brother picked me up for me to go see this brand new home that he had bought on Miami Beach. Now we're coming over from Liberty City. And so this the and and both are like four or five years older than I was at the time. But I remember this ride across the Venetian Causeway. He had he had this 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 big beautiful home and as he took us around this big beautiful home that was just completed his brother asked him said man because they never spent much time with each other he said how did you get something like this and the older brother said he said by a lot of hard work and the younger brother looked around and said hmm I'm not willing to do that. Did you hear that? I'm not willing to do that. And then we had lunch and we drove back across the Venetian Causeway, going back <laughs> <laughs> to the life that we were living, which was not a good life. We were surviving. And I just kept reverberating in my head what he said. I'm not willing to do that. See, when you look at people for the most part, for the most part, wherever you find yourself, there that's where you made a decision to be. 
Because based upon how much work are you willing to put in to change your situation? That, that's, that's, that, and, and when I look at myself, people always ask me like there's some magical response. How, how did you, how did you go from just coming from Liberty City and over town here in Miami and, and selected to be the Golden Gavel Award from Toastmasters or the CPAE Award, the highest award from the National Speakers Association or selected uh, one of the top five speakers in the world. I was willing to work. Most people aren't willing to do that. They, they have people all over the world that have to select who that person will be that will be in that, that elite group of the top five in the world. General Norman Schwarzkopf, Lee Iacocca, Robert Shuler. He had a, a, a television program, all right? And, 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 and myself and Paul Harvey, he had a, a nationally syndicated radio show. I didn't have any of that, but I was working. Th those people who had to cast a vote, they saw me at some time because I was moving. I want you to write this down. Keep it moving. I learned that from my mother. It was not unusual when you came home to Mamie Brown's house and we had a small, <laughs> we had a little small house. It was not unusual that the furniture would be reconfigurated. And I wondered how did mama do that with such limited space? That's not, how was one thing, but why she was always changing things up you you got you see one of the things that you don't want to do is 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 become comfortable with where you are when you know in your heart of hearts you can have more and you can do more and there's a life for you beyond survival see what it takes to survive what it takes to live are two different things and I just felt, I don't know where that came from, that I could do more. I, but here's what I did know, that where I was, that didn't work for me. That did not work for me. And I'm astonished when I go back to Miami and I see some of the same people in the same place. I'm astonished. Yes, yes, yes. So, so you got to keep it moving. Mamie Brown was always keeping it moving. I got to tell you this. <laughs> I was traveling and I was doing a tour for Sprint, I think it was. I came home and I came to the door and to my right, there was a window. Did you hear me? There was a window. There was some demolition of, of some houses in that area and my mother got somebody to go drag a window that had been taken out of a house and put it in our living room. So I asked, I said, Mama, what is it, Leslie? Why, why is this big window? What is, why is this window here? You say you're going to buy me a home, right? Yes, ma'am. Well, I didn't know if you're gonna build it or just buy it while it's already been built. But in case you decide to build it, you don't have to buy all windows for it. I got one window here, there's another house that's been demolished down the street, and I'm gonna send Mr. Shorty down there to get that. <laughs> I said, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That, that that put a fire under me. <laughs> I got that I got that that house quick, fast, in a hurry, immediately, if not sooner, yesterday. Uh, <laughs> when it got a window. And and every time I passed that window, it jarred me. She said, don't you touch it. Yes, ma'am, mama. Mom made me brown said, Don't touch it. Don't touch it. All right. <laughs> and so keep it moving. We're here to work. Commit thy works plural keep it moving and and if you're going in the wrong direction you discover but keep it moving this is no place to stand still this is a an incredible opening here and all good times have an expiration date just like the bad times
but keep it moving. And then when you are, are going through some stuff during the challenging times in your life, if you keep it moving, you'll get out faster. I'm telling you, if you keep it moving, you'll get blessings out of nowhere. Listen to me, out of nowhere, activity, working, doing the best you can. It, it activates your angels to give you blessings that you did not even know. I got a phone call the other day and it, it, it was it was a jaw dropper. I said, count me in. And it's it's it just came out of nowhere. But it was because of the work that I've been doing. This man said, I, I've been listening to you for a long time. I've been going through some stuff for years and I heard you and you brought me out and I want to do something special for you. I want to bless you. I'm saying to you, you have the opportunity to be a blessing to somebody. I'm thinking about the fact that, that each day that we wake up, as Orrin Hudson would say, it's the best day of your life. You get up with that kind of mindset. I'm encouraging you to do that. Today, when somebody asks you, hey child, how you doing? It's the best day of my life. Is that right? What, you caught the lottery? No, it's the best day of my life. I'm telling you. Yes, it is. What makes it the best day of your life? The fact that I'm here. You don't believe it's the best day. Try missing one. Yes, see, you want to focus, have your mindset on your goal. I had my mindset. I was going to buy my mother a home. I had my mindset. I'm going to make it happen no matter what. I had my mindset looking for a way to generate the money to get to that next level, to, to get beyond where we were in Liberty City and had a lot of str struggles and stuff happening. And, and stuff happens to everybody everybody don't 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 ask why does it have to happen to me why not you you want to give us some names and some emails and don't go around telling everybody 80 percent don't care and 20 percent glad it's you and not them <laughs> yes Oh, yes. Listen, you are God's favorite child. If not, you'll be taking a dirt nap. We are chosen to be here at this point in time. And this is our time. We just survived some incredible drama and we're still standing. Therefore, take unto you the whole arm of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day that having done all to stand. So what, what does it take? That What does that armor look like? Write this down. Initiative. Take the initiative to, to create something different for yourself and for your family and for your future and for your, your legacy. Take the initiative to, to create something that you don't have right now. Yeah, initiative. See, most people not talk about initiative. Here's something else that, 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 that part of that armor is. Ambition. Th that just the unwillingness to settle. I, I'd like, <laughs> I, 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 there was Bill Withers. He had a song years ago, Use Me, Baby. <laughs> use me up. You want life to use you up. Most people, they, they take their talents, their abilities, their art, and, and all of their stuff to the grave with them. You don't know what's stalking you. You don't know what life is going to throw at you. Some of that stuff is going to land. It's a part of the process. Life is difficult. It's, I wish I can tell you that it, it's, if you just tithe and, 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 and go to church or the synagogue or wherever you go for your spiritual fulfillment, that nothing's going to happen to you. Well, mm -mm, stuff's going to happen. But I can say this to you, if you're anchored properly, it will not prosper against you. All right. You you will be able to to brush it out of the way and keep moving. So taking the initiative initiative to create something else, using your mind, being actively engaged in life. Here's something else. As you look at yourself, look at your goals. Keep moving and keep learning. 
Keep moving and keep learning. This is a brand new place. This is a brand new landscape. It's a brand new world. And in a brand new world, you need some brand new tools to navigate it. The tools that we use in the 2020 era, that, that won't cut it. The tools that we used before the coronavirus, that won't cut it. And now they got a mutation that says it spreads easier and it's more lethal. Hmm. Wait a minute. Now we got to be mindful. Not frightened, but mindful. And say, how, how is it I need to conduct myself so that I don't make some irresponsible decisions that can take me out? I got to be mindful of the air that I breathe. And so you say, oh, that's, oh, that's just too bothersome. Oh, okay, good. Can I get some life insurance on you? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, you got to deal with what is. You, I'm, I'm tired of this Corona thing. Did you hear me? I'm tired, I'm sick. No, 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 no. I'm not going to say I'm sick and tired. I'm, I'm tired of it. It's gotten on my last nerve. All right? But I can deal with it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not willing to be so tired and irritated that I won't wear a mask. Oh, two masks. He's saying it's better to wear two masks now? No, I'm not doing that. No, oh. Oh, is that right? Well, can I just please, you know, when you go, you don't want everybody to be crying. Make my day. Can I get a policy on you? Just sign right here because I'm going to do it. I got my little Mickey Mouse mask. Mm-hmm. And I got another one with Minnie Mouse. <laughs> I'm Tyrone. If they say you need to wear 12 masks, so that you don't end up on a ventilator in a hospital. You got to wear 12 masks. So as we are trying to decide who's going to get medical care, any, meeny, miny, more. <laughs> no, 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 no. Homie ain't doing that. No, 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 no. I wear, I wear, uh, they said two masks. I'm wearing three and I got a shield. <laughs> You know, I, I want when, when if Corona knocks on my back door and I open the door and I got on three masks and a face shield, he say, oh, there he go. There he goes. Always overdoing it. We can't get to him. Let, let's go someplace else. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I want to live because I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. And I, and I don't want to be no ventilator. I don't want to be closed up anywhere. Mm -mm. No, no. And all I can see are their eyes. And no, no, that, that does not sound like a good time for me. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is why I enjoy making money from home. This is the, the people are sleeping on this. The, don't sleep this. Don't sleep this. When you can make money from home, people say, how can you laugh so much? I wish you could see my phone. When you can make money from home, virtually speak, and don't have to get on an, a plane and looking at the person next to you, and and when and lunchtime come, they got to take their mask off to eat. And you look at them and turn your head the other way. Don't look this way as you are chewing. <laughs> Somebody say, what is he talking about? Yes, yes. I... <laughs> so, so you want to take the initiative to create something different for yourself. You want to practice social distancing from people and the refrigerator. You want to go all out to take the steps that you need to take to keep you here longer. 
to add life to your years as well as years to your life. Does that make sense? Here's something else. Create special moments. When I come to speak to you at this time, it's special to me. I love you. Yes, I do. I love you. Oh, how I do. I love you. Yes, I do. I love you. Oh, how I do. Been taking lessons. I'm coming for you. Oh, behave. What a voice. He sounds so much like that, King Cole. Mm. Whoa, that's another ticket. You can't handle that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look here. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. You can't make this stuff up. You, you can, I'm going to so, tell you something. I don't, I don't do this often. When, when Gladys Knight and I were married, I decided that I wanted to sing. So she took me to a friend of hers that I would take some singing lessons from. And she was taking me through some, I guess, vocal vocal exercises a husband came in the back door and he he spoke to us was polite and went in the kitchen and he's very quiet in there and all of a sudden we heard something boom boom and we ran in the kitchen he had hit the floor and he had been drinking while i was in there practicing trying to learn how to speak. Now, Gladys will tell you that if you ask her, she'll tell you, I mean, how to sing. She'll tell you. And he said, you can't sing. Give him his money back. <laughs> I got drunk listening to you. <laughs> that was horrible. Oh, my God. That was so hard. He kept laughing. He said, man, you sound like you goggling razor blades. <laughs> Some people are cruel. That was not nice. I, 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 I didn't sing for a long time. <laughs> One time I tried to sing to her, and she said, Will you go to hell to sleep? <laughs> I, just, I, I, I thought she would say, Well, there's a voice in there somewhere. <laughs> no, she wouldn't lie. <laughs> You can see I'm fired up today. <laughs> Listen, you have something special. You have greatness in you. This is your time. Use this time to learn a new way of earning money. The major corporations are doing it. They have their, their people working from home, the majority working from home. So you want to jump on the bandwagon, people say. Opportunity knocks on every door. No. Opportunity stands by silently waiting for you to recognize it. This has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. You have something special. You're God's miracle child. Some great stuff's going to happen to you today. Thou shall decree a thing that shall be established unto you. You are a masterpiece because you're a piece of the master. Mm. Be with that. Meditate on that. And keep your eye focused on your dream. You were born to live your dreams, not your fears. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Y'all miss my flat top, don't you? My kid and play flat top. I'm going to grow it again because I can. Because we're going to be talking about something that's very important in pursuit of your goals and dreams. Very important when it comes to developing yourself, your talents, your abilities, your skills. Because one of the things I'm going to be talking about, I think, is one of the things that people don't spend enough time on. They talk about time management. You can't manage time. Everybody is 24 hours. What's most important is managing yourself, what you do with your time. People ask me all the time, how do you know so many quotes? I said, I take the time to memorize them. Hello, you think? <laughs> I put the work in. I use my time differently than other speakers, other trainers, other life coaches. 
So I want you to think about what it is that you're doing with your time today. And, and, and you know what? If you look at it, if you really look at it, all of us are basically the same. The only difference is how you use your time. I know people who, who have a lot of talent in, in, in specific areas and the difference between them and other people is the time that they put in. Listen to me. As you look at yourself, look at where you are right now in your life, the people that are gonna come out on top, the people that are going to make an impact, the people that are going to achieve their goals are the people who are mindful on how they use their time. And, and, and one of the things that you have to do is practice. You have to practice being mindful and asking yourself, is this the most productive use of my time? While my friends were having a good time, while my friends were partying, and I love to party, but I spent more time working on developing my skill, myself and my skills. I spent more time with my coach, Mike Williams, who wrote the book, The Road to Your Best Stuff, than I did with my friends. Why? I like my friends, but they weren't going to pay my bills. <laughs> but the things that I was going to learn from Mike as a coach, as a trainer, I could generate a lot of money and it allowed me to be able to walk away from my job. Write this down. If you use your time correctly, you'll be able to generate walk away money. If you use your time correctly, you'll be able to generate walk away money. The average person, time is no big deal to them. How many of you know people like that? Look at it. I mean, come on now, just be honest. Even if it's you, just, just blink your eyes. I see you. <laughs> that you know people have a lot of talent, a lot of abilities, a lot of, of, of things going for them, but they're not using their time appropriately. You don't manage time, you have to manage yourself. And, and what I did, I just carved out time every day to memorize a minimum of three to five quotes every day. You give me a topic, I can roll with it. I don't, I don't need a, 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 in a, a second to think about it because it's in here. I spend time working, reading, listening, and different ways in which I could use the quote to drive a point home, use the quote to create humor, use the quote to create special moments. And if you, you're serious and everybody right now, everybody listening to me right now, you, you listening to me right now, you want to become a great presenter. In order to become a great presenter, you in order to develop presentation power, you have to develop your power voice. How do you do that? You invest the effort and the time. If you want to put in the time so that you can learn a new skill virtually, so that you can get out of a job that's not you. And, and be able to go into your own business and do it from the comfort of your home. Now, I, I used to travel all over the world. I enjoyed that very much, but homie ain't traveling no more. <laughs> no, no, no. My buddy Tyrone, he said, no, don't do that no more. Some of y'all don't know Tyrone. Tyrone was a squirrel outside my window on the west side of my house, all right? So, so something, here's something that Shakespeare said. He said, defer no time. Delays have dangerous consequences. Let me share something with you. I remember when I had the opportunity to audition for a play at Miami-Dade Community College. Mrs. Werner was the director there and I didn't show up on time. Somebody else got the role. The reason I didn't show up truthfully, not just because I was late, but because I didn't believe in myself. I said, well, something else will come up and I'll be able to get that role. Nothing else came up and that was it. And, and so we've all had experiences. I want you to think about it. Something you put off and it cost you, it cost you. 
uh, guy was talking to me about becoming a part of my speaker training program. And I said, okay, I got a slot that's available now. So he said, I'll call you tomorrow. He didn't call. And so he saw me about two weeks later and said, hey, can I sign up now? Because one of my graduates told him how good it was for them. And I said, no. He said, why not? I said, you have to take advantage of the opportunity and the lifetime of the opportunity. I said, I don't have any openings for you now. But at some time, maybe three months, four months from now, that slot might be available again when somebody graduates. You have to take advantage of an opportunity and the lifetime of the opportunity. Is there something that you want to do? Some goal that you want to achieve? Something that's important to you? Some place that you want to go? Something that's important that, that as you look at it and think about it and say, I'd like to do this one day I'm gonna? No, 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 no. You don't know. You don't know. Don't, don't operate with it. One day I'm gonna. I remember being with my best friend, Boo. He's since passed. And we were in Nassau, Bahamas. And I said, you know what, Boo? I said, this is the first time you and I, we've been traveling all over the world. This is the first time that we have time that we can spend here in Nassau and you can find relatives that you haven't talked to in years. He said, oh, I, I got to get back to, 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 to the States because I've got to cook. There's a special event for the church. I said, hey, guess what, boo? They can get another cook. This is enough time in advance, a week in advance. Make a call, tell them that you will not be there because you are on vacation and we've never taken the time to spend this time together just having fun. We traveled when I was speaking and we went from city to city. My cousin Bo and I, we're in Nassau and we traveled and I would speak and, and Bo always went with me. And so, but we wanted to have some time special together where I would go to a beautiful place and I didn't have to speak. And so I said, this is a place, let's do it here. Let's, let's spend three weeks to a month here. Find relatives of yours that live here in Nassau and Bimini. And we, we can just, just, just chill out. And he said, I can't. I said, why not? He said, because I have to cook for an event that's taking place at the church. I said, you have enough time in advance call them and let them know. He said, there is nobody else. I said, listen to me. If something happened to you, they will find somebody else. They would not, will not cancel the event. He did not know and I did not know. When he said, I can't do it, he did not know that he would not be able to do it for the church, to cook for the church. He died a few days after we got back and they got another cook. They got another cook. Sometimes we think that we're irreplaceable. We're not. Somebody's waiting. When you have a goal, a dream, or something that you want to do, if you don't do it, somebody else will step in. Trust me, you, nobody's irreplaceable. Somebody will step in like they stepped in for my cousin Boo and they cooked. And that's all I was thinking about as I sat there in the front row looking at him in the casket because he always gave of himself, but we never took time to give to ourselves. And so that moment, that we had was moment, that was the last that we had the opportunity to spend three weeks together without my speaking. We never did. Uh, there's a quote, uh, Miles Davis says, time is not the main thing. Time is the only thing. And he's absolutely right. So I wanna ask you, 
How are you spending your time? How much are you putting in and focusing on the things that bring you joy, the things that make you smile, the things that make you feel good and laugh? How, how, much, how, how much time and energy are you focused on spending time with people that you love? You know, in order to, to, to live a life of no regrets, this lady, she worked for hospice and she wrote this book and it was about living a life of no regrets. And, and she said people who were dying, that what they regretted was not things dealing with how much money they made in their business, but how little time they spent with people that meant a lot to them, that if they had their lives to live over again, they would spend their time with certain people. At the end of my conversation with you, I'm encouraging you to make a list of some people that you need to deepen your relationship or somebody that you need to write a letter to and say, hey, I love you. And I just want to thank you for what you've meant to me. I didn't say text them. No, that's impersonal. No, just, just people don't get letters anymore. I used to remember you, you would go to the drugstore and you get a little tablet, you get your pins and everything. You would text, all right? No, when you write a letter, that's, that's personal. You take the time to do that. I, I sent out some letters to some friends the other day and they called me and said, hey, thank you very much. That meant a lot to me because I put the time in to do it, to think about it. And, 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 and I just get a card saying all the words that I wanted to say. I said it in my own voice. So I'm encouraging you, one, think about some people who you care about and who care about you and it meant something to you at some point in time. And you would just like to do something kind by writing them a letter, by taking the time to let them know that you were thinking about them. How are you using your time? If there's something that you want to do in your life that you've been thinking about for a long time, carve out the time to do it. Stop putting it off. Here's another quote, and I, you know I love quotes. Huh? You know I love them. Here's what I love. And, and this one says, Sometimes you never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Sometimes you don't know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. I was talking to two friends of mine and they knew Dr. Howard Thurman when they were younger. Now, some of you know Dr. Howard Thurman. Most people don't. He was a mentor to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I was so blown away. I said, you knew Dr. Howard Thurman? Yes. And I have these CDs that I was listening to that they gifted me. And, and I said, what was he like? And you know what they said? I, well, he was a nice guy. He was thoughtful. He was quiet. You could tell he was a deep thinker. I said, well, did you ask him things and, and just try and pull out some ideas, concepts, or thoughts that he might have? I said, no. We didn't know he was all of that. <laughs> Dr. Howard Thurman, come in, sir. The centering moment. Deep is the hunger. The two primary questions that one should ask oneself in life. Number one, where am I going? Number two, who's going with me? And if you ever ask those questions in the wrong order, you'll be in serious trouble. Oh, he was a bad brother. They said, we didn't know he was all that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, <laughs> I've had some moments with people that I did not know they were all that. <laughs> and I blew it. Yet had I known who they were, 
oh, I would have maximized that memory. I'd have gotten more out of our meeting. If you if you agree with me, I want you to put yes in the comment section. If you've ever had some moments with somebody and, and you really didn't take advantage of it, it, it was no big deal to you at that time. And then one day you realize, wait a minute, I didn't use my time wisely with that person. And so right now, in this era, this history changing era where we are, the people that are gonna come out on top, the people that are gonna get control of their destiny, the people that are going to maximize this place in history and be stronger and, and be fortified in terms of their mental resolve and in terms of their families and their skills and, and their ability to create incredible wealth are people that are using their times more productively. The people who take the time to learn something new, I say, and I want to say it every day. If you're not willing to learn, nobody can help you. If you're willing to learn, no one can stop you. Um, just before we are talking about to go outside our comfort zone. Yes. And there are also some books about letting go. How do we know when we have to let go or be perseverant or committed or persistent? It's my own uh, difficulty. I'm uh, very persistent, but sometimes maybe too much, I don't know. <laughs> you know, that's, we don't always know that. I mean, <laughs> let me give you an example. I've been out in Los Angeles for about five years now looking to have a production company to sponsor a new talk show. I had a talk show 10 years ago. Yeah. I've done so many interviews and they all say he's great, he's sharp, and he's old. So I leave the interview to tell my person who came there and set the meeting up. He's old. I know he's shocked, but he's old. And then I was <laughs> looking at television the other day on the Discovery Channel, and a program comes on. Now my show is designed to give people hope. In the United States, more people died from suicide than from traffic accidents, okay? Wow. Now, I think something's wrong with that. My program is designed to give people hope and create them, inspire them to increase their skill set in this age of what the late Peter Drucker calls the era of the three C's, accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition, and to create collaborative achievement-driven supportive relationships. The program that I saw on television that shocked me, among many, was Naked and Afraid. Two men, I mean two women, no, no, it was a man and a woman, naked, on an island, and this, this television show was designed to watch them while they're trying to learn how to survive on the island, naked and afraid. And at that moment, I said to myself, don't go and audition anymore. Don't go and talk to anyone else about your concept of using television, not just to entertain people, but to empower them. Find another way to do this. Now, do I see that as giving up on that medium? Because they're more concerned about head trash. I don't want to be in that toilet. Maybe, maybe I can carve out something else. Maybe I can have my own channel on YouTube and create a motivational channel from that place and be able to reach people around the world. And so maybe the instrument that I'm to use is not regular television, mm. but the internet. But leave that alone. Mm. That's so not my if, place. If I understand well, you have your purpose. Yes. And you keep your purpose, but you just change, you just change the way... That I approach it. Yes, so your yes. goal was not to have a, a production, but your goal was to impact people. To impact people's lives. And to them, I'm old because I'm 69. To me, I'm not retired, I'm refired. I'm ready to take it to the next level. I'm here to find out what is it that I have left. I've got a lot of life in me. And so I'm not going to let them to define what my contribution, if I leave the planet, is going to be. 
I'm just not going to try and get into that arena to do it. But just like now, you were giving me another avenue. I didn't even know you. And here you are talking to me. And this is going to be seen by people that had it not been for this relationship, yes. this collaborative relationship, people who will see me who would have never had access to me otherwise. And I will do my best to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Listen, it's your time. And, and I want you to go within and I want you to take some notes on some things that I want to share with you. And here's one of the things I, I want you to, to realize and, and to come to grips with. I didn't do what I'm doing now for 14 years because I didn't realize that it was my time. Now you might be saying, well, how do, how do you determine that? The fact that you're here, that you're here to do the greater work. And, and, and what I did was I disqualified myself. I kept myself on the sideline. I was an onlooker as opposed to becoming actively engaged in this thing called life. This is your time. I want you to write this down. Seize the moment. Seize the moment. Remember when Michael Jackson put off years from doing a, a national and international tour, and then he said he's going to put on this last concert, and he said, this is it. Don't forget that. He said, this one that I'm going to do, this is it. I'm going to put all my stuff in it. Don't, some of y'all remember this. He said, this is it. He didn't realize that life is so uncertain. He didn't realize it's so unpredictable. He did not realize that there are no guarantees. Here's a quote I want you to think about. If you put everything off until you're sure of it, you'll never get anything done. If you put everything off until you're sure of it, you never get anything done. And so I, I remember thinking about, well, I don't have a college education. Well, I can't compete with people with PhDs and MBAs. I don't have any paper behind my name. Listen, what you have and who you are is enough. Become actively engaged in this thing called life. Seize the moment. I constantly say, look, live like a warrior. And warriors are always in fight mode. And this is, you, this is what you have to do. Because this thing called life, it's challenging. You got to fight for peace of mind. You got to fight to stay away from the refrigerator. You got to fight to stay away from toxic, negative, energy draining people. You've got to fight to stay focused. You've got to fight to put all your efforts and energy into things that's productive, that's positive and purposeful. See, it doesn't take any motivation to, to procrastinate. It doesn't take any motivation to put things off or to think negatively, but it takes motivation to, to be optimistic in spite of, to have a perpetual a vision of yourself and your life in a, in a spirit of optimism, in spite of the circumstances and the adversities that's always knocking at the door or peeping through the window. Mm -mm. If you put everything off till everything get right, oh, when I get all my ducks lined up, is that right? <laughs> what, if, what if it's not duck season? <laughs> When I get all my ducks lined up, when uh, when I you know when when Peter stopped r robbing, you know one of those things my mother used to say, uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's what my mother used to say, <laughs> robbing Peter to pay Paul. How did she come up with that one? <laughs> Listen, if there's anything that we know now, just with the coronavirus alone, do what you're going to do and do it now with a sense of urgency. And, and here's something else that, that, that I want you to, to look at. And that, that things that I know, I'm 75. And so I know a thing or two. And I remind you of that because I, I'm finding so many of my classmates, the only time that I get calls from them is when someone dies. Now guess what happens when somebody who is, is who's handling the roster for class reunions and 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 
activities of, of people that we graduated with, you know what happens when you get calls to that effect or get a text? You're thinking, am I next? <laughs> you know, tell me, send me some information about the ones that are living. Send me some information about my classmates that are making a difference. Send me something about my classmates who graduated with me in 1963 from Booker T. Washington High School in Miami, Florida, that's, that's living their dream and taking their lives to the next level, that's creating generational wealth, that's happy and successful, and, 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 and what good things they're doing in the world, the greater work, so I can emulate that. So, I can be encouraged by that. Don't tell me about people that's dying. I, I'll find out sooner or later. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm not being insistent. I, I really don't mind that. But I'm saying let's balance it out. Balance it out because all of us going to go. Nobody's figured out how to get out of life alive. Nobody. All of us going to check out of here. People dying today who never died before. You know what? <laughs> Oh, behave, Tyro. You know what? <laughs> so here's something that Shakespeare said. Defer no time. Delays have dangerous ends. Mm, defer no time. Delays have dangerous ends. You think about that. Because I didn't think I can be who I'm now being. I didn't think the life that I've been living that it was available to me. Here's what I know. If you focus on living, if you focus on being actively engaged in life, every day finding some way in which you can make a greater impact, where you can do more, that you can achieve more, the possibilities are unlimited as to what can open up for you. And so I was hungry. How did you get started? I was hungry. I was hungry to buy a home for my mother. I was hungry to do something that would give my life a sense of value. I was hungry to be my own boss. I, 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 I realized that the reason at first I used to get angry when they used to fire me saying I had too much mouth and, and uh, that I was just, I was just too upbeat. And so they want to check me. They want to put me in my place. Well, I'm not that kind of guy that you can just disrespect me. No, 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 no. This is the place, not a problem. I, I, was, I, I, I was looking for a job when I found this one. No problem. And so, but I noticed that the, the, the things that, that happen, what appears to be happening to you, they're really things that's happening for you. Because had I not been made uncomfortable working for someone, you would not know this Les Brown that you now see. See, sometimes life has to step in and say, you know what? Eve's this little learner. Let's step in here. When you don't have enough courage to do what it is that you've been sent here to do, to live the life that you've been chosen out of 400 million sperm, to live, when you don't have enough courage to do that, life moves on you. You were chosen to do the greater work. That's why you're still breathing. That's why you're not taking a dirt nap. That's why you are here to be a blessing. You, you, we, were, you, we were created by the creator to create. What do you mean by hungry? People that are hungry, they're positive about what they want. People that are hungry, they're persistent. They, they keep coming back again and again and again. They know that you will fail your way to success. People that are hungry are willing to persevere when it appears that, that all the odds are stacked against them. They keep coming on. When everybody is, has counted them out, they, they, as long as they got a pulse, they keep coming back. They keep holding on. They don't give up. They, they, they might bend, but they won't break. Are you hungry? Is there something in your life as you think about your life right now? And I did this self-explanatory style of, of saying to me, Les Brown, come on, you can do this. You can do this. Sometimes you have to talk to yourself. But the other thing is, 
I asked myself, if I died now, what would I be upset about? Some dream that I had that I put off that I didn't get done. And at that point, I thought about I love to travel. I, there are places I wanted to go, things I wanted to see, experiences I wanted to have. And I saw a guy who was speaking and I said, hey, I can do that. The room was as quiet as a graveyard between funerals. <laughs> he, he didn't get any response from the audience at all. I feel so sorry for him. <laughs> but I said, hey, I said, man, this guy is boring. Fortunately, I was seated next to his brother-in-law. Coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. I said, this guy is boring. And he said, the brother-in-law, you ought to be that boring and make the kind of money he made. I said, well, how much money he made? He said, $5,000 an hour. I said, oh, hmm, I can do that. <laughs> now, mind you, before then, I talked myself out of it. Gary Cox said this. When there's an argument between your mind and your heart, follow your heart. Where your heart is there, your treasure is also. Follow your heart. Most of us have a, a, a mind-driven life, you know? And, and what do you mean by there's eyesight and there's mind sight. See, the mind, that's where your imagination resides. See, when you have eyesight, you just judge according to appearances, but mind sight, you, you look beyond the appearances and you create a vision in your mind of things already accomplished because all dreams happen twice. First in the mind and then in the without. Okay? So I want you to, especially now, with this coronavirus thing, especially now, with all the other stuff and drama that's going on every day in the world, nationally, globally, and locally, especially now, but you, you might be breathing the wrong air seated next to someone or walking and somebody walked past you and you don't know what's going on with them. I got on an elevator at Emory uh, University and, and, and they, they only allow four people on the elevator and this guy had his mask on. I had mine on and then nobody there but he and I and then he took his mask off to sneeze. Let me tell you something up in here. I was about to lose my mind with him. I, I, you know what I'm about to say? I was looking at him. You about to make me lose my mind up in here, up in here. <laughs> I know if he could have jumped out of the elevator, he'd have left there soon. <laughs> the look I gave you, if you don't put that mask back on, <laughs> I gave him that Mamie Brown look. You know, my mama used to say, you know what? Y'all better not make me come back there. No, ma'am, mama, please don't come back <laughs> We would bring out the King Kong. <laughs> One of the things I'm doing, this is the beginning of the year, and I want you to listen to me closely. You can't make it by yourself today. There's so many things that's happening, so many things that's changing. And, 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 and as you look at where things are right now, let me say something that the news won't tell you. All right, listen to me. God's in, he, he's in all of this. God is in this mix up in here. Do you hear me? He's all over this stuff. They ain't talking about that. They ain't all, they should, they should have breaking news. God has interrupted all this mess that's going on up in here. Breaking news. He's still on the throne. Breaking news. All things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. That's the breaking news. There will be no commercial breaks. Just this information all things did you say something no 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 all things uh, come on now, are you really all things all things work together for those who love god and for those who are called according to his purpose mm. that's some good news up in here they don't don't know no. if it leads it if it bleeds it leads see if somebody's got to die got to be an accident something ugly got to happen to make the news but the real good news is that all things work together for good for those who love God, 
according to his purpose. Well, what about my adverse circumstances right now? Trust me, it's going to work out. Well, what, what about the fact that I'm, I'm about to be foreclosed? Trust me, it's going to work out. What about the fact I'm, about, I'm facing eviction? What about the fact that I, I've lost my job? Trust me, trust him. It's going to work out. This is not the end. It's just the beginning of a new chapter in your life. It's a new chapter. And as you believe, as you keep the faith, keep the faith, baby. Adam Clayton Powell knew what he talked about. Keep the faith. Oh, we, we've gone through some stuff before. Keep the faith, baby. Oh, no. It, it, see, in this place where we are, it's easy to have faith when you got money, you got your health, and, and things are working out fine for you. Oh, it's, it's so fine. You can easily say, oh, just think positive and be enthusiastic and everything will work out all right. No, no, no. You're going to get some whippings in this thing called life. Mm -mm. You got. You have to keep the faith this, because this stuff is cyclic. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes things go well, sometimes they don't go so well. And no guts, no glory. It takes guts to continue to believe, to trust to stand strong, to stand up inside yourself, to take guts to do that, to come back again and again and again. It takes guts to look at things that you put all your effort and all your money and all your energy into, and, and then you have, have life interrupt you and you lose everything except your life. People say, I lost everything. I want to just tap on the television and say, no, 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 you didn't lose everything. No, 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 no. You have life. You're still here. You're still breathing. You still got a pulse. And who you are behind your eyes is still here. And that force, that energy, that presence behind your eyes can produce what it is that you've lost. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been bankrupt. You're not a loser. Things just did not happen the way you wanted them to happen. You're a winner. You were born to win. You came here winning. So whatever you want to do, do it now. And if you're going through some stuff right now, keep it moving, baby. Keep it moving. No, 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 no. I'm depressed right now. No, you don't have the luxury of being depressed. Keep it moving. Use your mind to be creative. And, and look for a way to get out of the situation where you are. You will work your way back to where you were and beyond there. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor. Yes. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts should be established. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. You've been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth. Those are not just words that were printed on a page. Those are words that are to become actualized in your life. And I'm putting together groups, mastermind groups of greatness. People see in order to make it the three things that's major right now. Number one, working on your mind. So when you go to hungrytospeak.com, you're going to get some things that you listen to called choosing your future. That as you listen to this message over and over and over again, it's going to change your life overnight. There are people listening to me right now. I want you to put on the screen what difference those messages have made in your life. Put them up there so people can see them. Put them up there right now. Do it right now. If you've heard choosing your future, it's possible. It's necessary. It's you. It's hard. It's worth it. It's done. Stick a fork in it. It's done. Yes, stick a fork in it. No, that's what people can tell you. That will tell you. Do you see anything yet, Mike, John Leslie? Yeah. They're putting it up there? Yeah, let me tell you something. It, it will make you get your hustle on. Let me tell you something. Don't, don't, don't listen to it at night. You won't be able to go to sleep. You'll be so motivated to be talking in your sleep. Listen, and... and, and it, who, <laughs> thank you. Who said that? Hey, Kent. Hey, brother Kent. Hiya. All right, Kent. Oh, man, listen to me. Because you survived. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? You made it out of 2020. Whoa! Don't miss that. Don't miss that. A lot of folk didn't make it. A lot of people didn't make it. Don't take it for granted that you're supposed to make it. 
to just have a, a spirit of humility and say, thank you, Lord. A lot of people are parting. I wasn't parting. I said, thank you, Lord. I'm still here. Uh, cancer Citizens of America um, amazed me. They say he's dealing with four stage cancer, but he's still here. He's been here for 29 years with this. And he hear about with some pain that's in his shoulders and his back. And but he's still here. He's 75. We don't look it, but he's still here. He says he used mascara to cover his gray, but he's still here. Ooh, in fact, I, I see some great kind of rebellion right now. I need to hook them up. What is this? I got you. I don't know what's happening up here. What's, what's, what y'all doing there? I don't homie don't play that. What y'all doing? What you, you did I tell y'all get the, excuse me, about to make me lose my religion. <laughs> if people don't leave home without the American Express, I don't leave home without my mascara. <laughs> oh, behave. Oh, whatever. You make me Randy, baby. <laughs> Why are you so happy? Because I'm here. Are you crazy? Uh, the, the, the stuff I deal with, I mean, it's stuff I'm dealing with right now. I'm still here when I get through. But see, when I speak, I don't hurt. But when I get through speaking, like I'm talking to y'all, the pain is in in my room. Said, uh, are you through? Uh, I, well, I don't know. I think I got a little bit more to say. You, you know, as long as you're speaking, you got a job. We ain't gonna mess with you, but um, <laughs> well, when you get through, we go, we gonna light you up. Let me tell you what happened. This is a true story. I was the program director at WVKO radio station, right? So this news director I hired, I'm not gonna tell you his name. He went to sleep in the newsroom, so I'm sitting up there waiting for him to come in. At 10 o'clock to do the news, this time that you can rip and tear and read the news off the Associated Press. I'm sitting waiting, got an uh, instrumental playing, and and he, <laughs> he was in the room sleep. So people came and said, he's in the room sleep, he's not coming now. I put on a, roll, a long record and I had everybody go watch and I put a note in his hand while he was asleep and the note read, as long as you sleep, you got a job. When you wake up, you are fired. <laughs> so everybody was watching through the window to see what he's gonna do when he woke up. He woke up. <laughs> do you know he slept another hour and a half? <laughs> We got tired of watching him. He's not to know I don't have. I guess he looked to see where I did it. <laughs> you never heard that one, huh, John Leslie? That's a true story. That's a true story. That's it. Long as you sleep, you got a job. Don't wake up. <laughs> okay. But listen, what does it take to make it not less? Mental resolve, all right? Next thing is, you have to upgrade your skill set. And we teach you how to do that, how to make money in a variety of ways. The other thing is, and th I cannot emphasize this enough, getting around the right people. That's why I'm, I'm putting this greatness mastermind together. Being around the right people. Sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know and what they know about you and, and being able to have the ability to communicate with people behind doors that you want to get into and have relationships with people that's on the path of where you are going. Being around the right people, that's major. Do you hear me? That's major. Don't downplay that. Don't try and do this stuff solo by yourself because it's too many people that's working against you and don't want to see you make it. If there's nothing else we know, one out of every two people you know that you see every day, they got it out for you. <laughs> and me too. <laughs> Why? It's just that way. It's just, that's what it is. But we will find a way to win together. All things work together for good 
for those, not just one person, for those where two or three are gathered. Ooh, I will be among you. Whoa, we're not by ourselves? No, absolutely not. Oh, no. Hmm, that's some good news. 